This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Rips it deep to left. Will it stay fair? It will for a two-run shot. It's a two-run blast. Live play-by-play coverage of BYU Baseball is brought to you by doTERRA. doTERRA, proud sponsor of the BYU Baseball team. Now let's get you ready for Cougar Baseball. Here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good afternoon, Cougar baseball fans. Welcome back inside Globe Life Field in Arlington, Texas for the final game of a three-game series that BYU and Oklahoma State have split through games one and two. BYU winning the opener by an 8-6 to six score on Thursday. OSU coming back to win game two, 3-0 last night, a game in which none of the, Coug- uh, the Cowboys' runs were earned, uh, but BYU bats uh, were silenced as uh, Cowboy pitchers combined for 19 strikeouts on the night. I'm Greg Rubel. I'll have today's play-by-play call. I'm in our broadcast booth, high above and behind home plate, sitting alongside BYU Baseball Operations Director Tuckett Slade. First pitch coming right up. Let's get right to this afternoon's starting lineups, courtesy of Big O Tires. Your local Big O Tires has financing available. Big O Tires, the team you trust. BYU will lead off with the center fielder, number six, six Mitch McIntyre, hitting second. Number 10, Hayden Latham, the left fielder, hitting in the three-hole. Number four, Andrew Pintar, the second baseman. Hitting cleanup, number 22, Cole Gamble, the right fielder, jersey number 22. Colin Reuter, jersey number 18, the catcher hits fifth, hitting sixth. Ring number 27, Ryan Sapiti, the first baseman. First start for Alex Sardina at DH, jersey number 14 for Sardina. Hitting eighth, number 25, Austin Deming, the third baseman. And hitting in the nine hole, number two, Brock Watkins, the starting shortstop. Starting pitcher for BYU, getting his last warm-up tosses in. Number 41, Nate Dolly, the right-hander. For Oklahoma State, they'll lead off with the second baseman, Rock Riggio, hitting second games one and two, leads off tonight. Jersey number seven, Riggio, plays second base. The right fielder, Zach Earhart, jersey number four, hits second, hitting third, playing left field, number 17, Jake Thompson. Hitting cleanup, jersey number 12, DHing Garrett Martin. Hitting fifth, jersey number 31, the first baseman, David Mendham. In the six hole, number six, uh, 13, Nolan McLean. He's the third baseman today. Starting shortstop, Marcus Brown, jersey number 19, hits seventh. Hitting eighth, Caden Trenkel, the center fielder, wearing number 28. And hitting in the nine hole, the catcher, number 33, Chase Atkinson. Starting pitcher for the Cowboys, number 22, the lefty, Mitchell Stone. About to get this one underway as Rock Riggio will step into the batter's box and face Nate Dolly. Dolly is 0-2 with a 4.76 ERA, making his fourth start of the season. The righty Dolly kicks and fires to the left-handed hitting Rock Riggio, and that's inside for ball one. Well, Tuckett, time for a series win. Yeah, that's what it comes down to. Fun two games. And uh, here we are, game three, rubber match, trying to leave Texas with a series win. And that's grounded foul down the first baseline for an even count. One ball, one strike to Rock Riggio. BYU is in whites in nights one and two. The all whites on Thursday, the pinstriped whites last night. They'll go with the white pants, but navy jerseys today, navy caps and the block cougs across the chest. Oklahoma State in the creams today with the block Cowboys across their front. The 1-1. That's ball two. Scoreboard shows 1-1, but the count should be 2-1, correct? It should be, yeah. Yeah. So two balls and a strike to Rock Riggio, first batter of the game. This Saturday matinee here at Globe Life Field, home of the Texas Rangers, hosting collegiate baseball this weekend. Daly wind up and delivery for strike two. Two balls, two strikes to the leadoff hitter, Rock Riggio. Riggio has reached in 10 consecutive games. He's had a good series, three for seven. With a two-run home run starting his weekend on Thursday night. The 2-2. Outside edge and didn't catch it. So it goes to full. Scoreboard shows two balls, two strikes, but this should be a full count to Rock Riggio. Yeah, and last night that was definitely strike three on the batter with the <laughs> zone that we had, but tonight uh, Tony Prater behind the dish is a true strike zone. It has to be across the plate and the corners to be called a strike. And that is a six-pitch walk to the game's leadoff batter, Rock Riggio. So Dally missing there, and Riggio's at first base. And the Cowboys had base runners in eight of nine innings last night. The only inning in which they didn't put a man aboard was the ninth. So Riggio, the leadoff walk, 
Stepping in the right-handed batting, Zach Earhart, who led off nights one and two. He saw his 10-game reach safely streak end in last night's game. Grounded to Penny. Penny will scoop to Watkins for one. The fire to Sapiti for two and a double play. Nicely done. So Riggio is erased on the grounder from Earhart to Andrew Pintar. Pintar playing just to the right of the second base bag. Had a short little scoop to Brock. Brock kicked and fired to first. And the double play, two out here in the top of the first. Hey, you walk the leadoff, but the pitcher's best friend, the double play, and you're back with two outs, nobody on. Go after this batter here, keep everything down. The 4-6-3 DP brings Jake Thompson to the dish. Thompson takes ball one. Jake Thompson has reached in five consecutive. Has one hit in this series, one for eight with a run scored. The left-handed hitting, Jake Thompson. Dally winds up and fires high and away for ball two. 2-0 two the count to Thompson. Nate Dally, 11 point, or 11 and a third innings pitched coming into today. Gotta that's grounded over. to Ryan Sapiti. Sapiti will scoop nice to Dally, who steps on the bag, and that's it for the Cowboys in the top of the first with one half inning in the books. Let's hear now from BYU head coach Mike Littlewood in our leadoff interview presented by doTERRA. doTERRA, pursue what's pure. And today, Coach Littlewood talks about, uh, well, hitting the reset button after a night where hits were hard to come by. Well, I told him when I go back to the hotel room after games like that, that my mind gets going and I take notes and I looked at my game notes and I just wanted to talk to him about certain things. And, and you know, really it was it came down to we need to think up, think one play ahead. We need to make in-game adjustments. Um, we need need to execute and we need to pay attention to detail. We need to do a little bit better job of that. And I told him we're playing great. We played great yesterday except for the eighth inning and it cost us a ball game and we didn't make in-game adjustments. And so I said, hey, you're in the lineup for a reason. Have confidence in yourself. Believe in yourself everybody else does and just get the and just get the job done i mean that that was really the crux of the of the conversation all right pitching matchup today i like our our uh, piggyback duel with um nate daly and and ryan brady i mean i think that gives us some length in the game should get, get us through seven hopefully and we have most of our pen ready um scott their left-hander is really good i mean he's six nine he's gonna have some some big time tilt to it uh he knows what he's doing he's he's a veteran guy um, we're, we're putting Alex Sardina in the lineup today, getting his first start, so I'm excited to see what he's going to do and kind of looking for that right-handed piece to our lineup that's going to extend it a little bit. But, I mean, it should be a good ball game. Nate needs to come out and give us a really good start. And looking to get another series win for your team. Yeah, that's another message I gave him before the game is we have an opportunity to make a, an early statement in our season by winning a series against a top-10 team and a top-10 program. I mean, one of the best programs traditionally yeah. in the history of college baseball. We played them well. And uh, we, we do need to go up there with a little bit more confidence uh, at the plate and, and uh, execute a little bit better. But it's a big game for us. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I wouldn't say a must win or anything like right. that, but it's a huge opportunity for us today. Looking forward to it. Coach, thank you for the preview. We'll talk to you post game. Okay, thanks, Greg. All right, that's Mike Littlewood. And here's Mitch McIntyre to lead the game off in the bottom of the first for BYU. First pitch he sees. Lifts to short left field. Jake Thompson will handle, and one gone after one pitch here in the bottom of the first inning. Mitch McIntyre coming in two today with an 18-game reached base streak. The last six games of last year and the first 12 games of this year. But he's retired on a fly out to left field. It'll be Hayden Latham stepping into the batter's box. Latham, the left fielder, hitting second today. Mitchell Stone, the left-hander, kicks and delivers for strike one. Coach Littlewood, uh, Tuck, moving Hayden up in the batting order a little bit today. Yeah, just extending the lineup a little bit, moving Pintar to three, so you'll have uh, separating the lefties a little bit more in our lineup. But, That's uh, inside for ball one, one and one to Latham. It's going to be uh, it's a little different pitcher that we're facing today, Greg. We're facing a guy who's 6'9", but he only runs it up there 87, 88. Unlike the guys we faced yesterday, that are mid 90s to upper 90s. The 1 1 to ball two from Mitchell Stone. Yeah, and Mitchell's already uh, frustrated with uh, Prater's uh, zone because he's used to probably getting a little bit more. It is a true hitter's zone, and it's a true zone. I really love Tony Prater's strike zone. 
Two balls and a strike to Latham. Balls Latham well. gives it a ride deep to left. Left fielder back into the track and to the wall, and that is gone! Yes, it is. A solo shot for Hayden Latham. And the Cougs are on the board first. It's a first inning home run. A solo shot to deep left. And the Cougs lead one to nothing on a Zions Bank home run. For banking that helps you game plan for life, Zions Bank is for you. Okay, Hayden. Uh, we've seen this before, haven't we? A little first <laughs> inning home run barrage. Great way to get your offense on the board early after the tough night last night. Nicely done, Hayden. Second home run of the season for Hayden Latham. His first was the Grand Slam against Ohio State. Was that not also a first inning home run on that day? It was Grand Slam, yeah. Yep. So Latham's second bit of yard work, and BYU takes the 1 nothing lead here in the bottom of the first. A one out solo shot to left for Latham. The Cougars, by the way, have not lost a game this year when they do hit at least one home run. As that's outside after a strike one delivery from Mitchell Stone. So one and one the count, one out, no one on for the number three hitter Andrew Pintar. Second baseman Pinney hits third in today's lineup. Mitchell Stone kicks and fires. That's a swing and a miss from Andrew. So Hayden Latham puts BYU on top. 1-0. Thursday night, the Cougars had a 3-0 lead after one on two home runs, a two-run shot from Gamble and a solo job from Colin Reuter. Andrew Pintar, one hit in the series. It came last night, and that's a swing and a miss. Ball got away from the catcher. He'll fire to first to formally retire Andrew Pintar. So Pintar, the strikeout victim. And, and Andrew right now, Greg, is just pressing too much, right? It's an important year for him, for his career. And, and right now he's just trying to do too much. And then you get to the problem of you try to do too much, and then you're trying to do not so much. You kind of get stuck in the cross between. He just needs to relax and play the game. He is a fantastic player. He works so hard. It's going to come. He's just got to let it come back down and just let him play like he normally can. Fifth strikeout of this series for Pintar at the plate. First pitch to Cole Gamble from Mitchell Stone is a strike, a called strike 0-1 to Cole. Cole struck out swinging in all four of his at-bats last night. And that's away and skipping away from the catcher, Chase Atkinson, for ball one. Ball one, strike one, and two out with no one on here in the bottom of the first inning. Hayden Latham, solo home run to left field, puts the Cougars on top, one to nothing. And Cole lays off for ball two. Cole had company among batters striking out last night. Uh, Oklahoma State pitchers did whiff a few, didn't they, Tuck? Yep. Yeah, it was a tough night. Good hit right there. And a single for Cole Gamble. On the ground. Between second base and shortstop. More or less up the middle, slightly to the right. And that'll be Cole's first hit in his first at-bat. BYU's got a runner aboard with two out here in the bottom of the first inning. Well, tough, uh, Cole had a tough night last night. Good to get right back on the board again today. The best part about baseball, Greg, is that guess what? The next game is a whole new situation. Forget about last night's tough loss and come out tonight, today. BYU's already equaled last night's hit total in the first inning of this game. Cougars were shut out on two hits last night. Cougars have one run on two hits here against Oklahoma State on Saturday afternoon. First pitch is a ball to Col Colin Reuter. Reuter, the catcher, hitting fifth. Throw back to Cole Gamble. Mendham will take a cursory swipe at Cole. On the check back from the starting pitcher, Mike Mitchell Stone. Cole Gamble at first base. Two out here in the bottom of the first. BYU leads 1-0 on the Hayden Latham solo home run. Hayden now with hits in 10. Oh, his last 13 games played. 10 of 13 this year. This is game 13 for BYU. Cooks come in 8 and 4. Cowboys 8 and 6. A step off for Stone. A step out for Reuter. He'll dig back in. The right-handed hitting Reuter against the southpaw. Mitchell Stone. Took the bat off the shoulder but didn't come through with it. Ball 2. And no strikes Well, Great to time Reuter. to hit here. Love hitting in these opportunities right now. 2-0. Runner on first. You're already up one nothing. He's got to come, be on time. Stone winds up and fires. That's high for ball three, so a 3-0 count to Colin Reuter. Mitchell Stone 
You mentioned he's 6'9". 271 pounds to go with that 6'9 frame. A big boy. The 3-0 to Colin Reuter. Reuter has a home run in the series. And that's a four-pitch walk to Colin Reuter. So first and second with two out here in the bottom of the first for BYU. And Tuck, last night, the Cougars didn't get a runner to second base. <laughs> and we already got two so far. One's crossed it already. Yeah, one, one, <laughs> one got past it on the way home. So a much better start offensively for BYU in this one. Cougs with a run on two hits. Colin Reuter at first base after a base on balls brings up the first baseman, the right-handed hitting Ryan Sapiti. Sapiti had the game-winning blast on Thursday. Grand slam in the sixth. One of three home runs on that night. BYU now four home runs in the series. Cougs won. Cowboys no score. First and second. Two out. Well, two and out. You talk about two out knocks, right? Cowboys got a big one last night to add on to their insurance run, right? Now early in this game, two outs, runners in scoring position. You want to get a hit here and extend this lead. It's five straight balls from Stone. Looks back a second, comes Plateward. And that's lifted foul out of play down the first baseline. One ball, one strike with two out, two on for BYU in the bottom of the first inning. The Cougs lead, second batter of the game, Hayden Latham. Took Mitchell Stone out of the park after Mitch McIntyre flied out to left. Hayden Latham went the same direction with about 50 or 60 extra feet of distance. And that's a swing and a miss for Sapiti on the 1-1 offering. One ball, two yeah. strikes to Sapiti. Great, went to the changeup right there, running away. Ryan's seen it now. The junior from Las Vegas, Ryan Sapiti, BYU's RBI leader with 16 on the year. That's a swinging strikeout for Sapiti, taking us to the top of the first inning. In the bottom of one, BYU gets one run on two hits. There were no errors. There were two left on. We go to the top of the second with BYU leading Oklahoma State 1-0 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to Cougar Baseball. Alongside Tuckett Slade, here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Top of the second inning, and Nate Daly. We'll face Garrett Martin, the DH, making his seventh DH start today. Jersey number 12 for the Cowboys. Martin with three hits in the series, three for seven with a couple RBI. He's the first batter in the top of the second. BYU takes a 1-0 lead in the first with a Hayden Latham solo home run. And that's two pitches in and two balls to Garrett Martin from Nate Daly. Got to attack the hitters in the zone, keep the ball down. The 2-0 goes to three balls and no strikes as Daly elevates. Coach Mike Littlewood calls it the uh, the piggyback day. He yep. looks at uh, Daly, uh, Daly and Brady as the two that he hopes get him into at least the seventh today. There's yeah. a take from Martin and a strike delivered from Daly. Yeah, it's a good little combo that we that we like to go to. Nate can give us, you know, hopefully three or four, and then you go to Brady. And they're two different types of pitchers, and so it's a good, good mix. The 3-1, and that's... Drilled to center, but making the run in as Mitch McIntyre catches it on the fly. So a sharp shot, but good break from Mitch. And Martin's retired on the fly out to center field. Long outing for Nate this year is five and a third. His high pitch count 64. Mitchell Stone's gone five and two thirds for his long outing. His high pitch count 85. Last night starter for the Cowboys, Justin Campbell, got to 100, got to 106 pitches. Jansen Kiesel went 88, and both those numbers were each pitcher's season-high tying pitch count. Yep. Next hitter, David Mendham, the Canadian first baseman, left-handed hitting. Five lefty bats to face the righty Daly. Reggio, Thompson, Mendham, Brown, and Tranquil, the left-handed hitters. David Mendham, one for two in the series, two RBI. The 1-0. Inside edge for strike one. One ball, one strike two. David Mendham. Yeah, one with a slider there on the inner half. Good pitch. 
That's his strikeout pitch. He really likes to go to his slider. And both starters today kind of count the slider as their out pitch. That's again inside, a little too far in toward the body of David Mendham for ball two. Two balls out, no one on. We're in the top of the second inning at beautiful Globe Life Field here in Arlington, Texas. A daytime game to close out this three-game series. Daly kicks and fires and gets Mendham to swing through. Strike two, two and two the count. Got to compete in the zone. Make them earn everything. Last night, the eight walks and, and the two errors in that one inning were really the difference in the game. Yeah. I mean, we, we were dominated offensively, and those happen. Those are days will happen, but uh, if you don't take away, if you take away those errors in the walk. Grounder to Sapiti, backhands it, underhand scoop to Daly, and they threw it away. The error there, yep, on so Sapiti. The error allows the runner to reach. Cougs had that one, and Sapiti just underhand scooped it too high over the head of Nate Daly who was charging to first to cover. If that's a lower scoop, that's two out instead. Batter reaches on the error. Well, and to show you how high, I mean, Nate Daly's 6'6", right? So to overthrow him, yeah, yeah. To overthrow him, you're really throwing that thing high. He just held on to that way too long. you got to aim right at the belly button of the pitcher. So that's an E3. As Sapiti's underhand went over the head of Nate Daly. Runner on and one out. Here in the top of the second inning. Strike one delivery from Daly to Nolan McLean. McLean, the third baseman, hitting right-handed against the righty Daly. BYU won Oklahoma State, no score. We're in the top of the second inning. Yes, he did. As he brought the bat off the shoulder and took the barrel through the zone, tried to hold back, but this call is strike one. You know, Greg, what you like to see right in this situation is, is Jake going to let that air affect him on the mound, right? Some pitchers, they make that air, and it, it completely changes the whole inning, and they can't get back in the zone. But it's nice to see him get two quick strikes in a row right after that air. The 0-2. And that's high, almost to the girders here at Globe Life Field. Third baseman Austin Deming. It watches hit, it all the it way almost up. Almost hit that, didn't it? And all the way into his glove. It's, you've got to really sky yeah. it to hit the the the, the steelwork here at Globe Life Field, but it got near it. So a sky high pop up to third base, and Deming handles for out number two it of is, inning uh, number two. I was told it was 257 feet hmm. to these steel beams up here, and that was probably about 255. That's what it looked like from our vantage point. And we're about as high as you can get here, Greg. Marcus Brown, the shortstop, hits with two out, one on. The one out, the one on reaching on an error. That's outside edge for ball one. The scoreboard has given Oklahoma State a hit, but the Cowboys are yeah. hitless in this game. That was a reach on the E3 to put Mendham at first base. So it's no runs and no hits right now for Oklahoma State. One error for BYU putting Mendham at first. The 1-0. Goes to two balls and no strikes. And today's scoreboard operator having a bit of a, a, a trial early because yeah. behind on the balls and strikes, and now the hit's been taken off the board, but now it's two balls and no strikes. And the scoreboard now matches the situation on the field. Two balls, no strikes, two out, one on for Oklahoma State. Cougs lead 1-0. Daly working on the third base side of the pitcher's rubber, and that's laced. It'll be a single to right. Oh, oh, and no. under the glove oh, no. of the right and fielder, he's Gamble. Score. Get rid of it, Penny. Oh, he held him. Oh, my goodness. And the runner holds at third. That's Mendham. So two fielding errors here in the first yeah. inning. Luckily, no one has scored, but it's second and third now with two out for Oklahoma State. Gamble charging hard on the single to right, and the ball skipped under his glove. And Mendham was held. Yes, yeah, so that's a single with the air that advances both runner because Mendham was actually staying at second, so it would have been first yeah. and second with two outs, but now it's second and third, two outs, and Nate really got to bear down here and find a way out of this jam. So Brown at second, Mendham at third, and Caden Trankel, the center fielder, the number eight here in the lineup, digs in against Nate Daly. And Daly has seen... His defense have a couple of hiccups here in the second inning. Two errors already for BYU in the first two innings. 
The first hit of the night or the day came moments ago from Brown, the single to right that ended up with him at second on the error from Gamble. One ball, no strikes. And that's two balls and no strikes. Thought he caught an edge high or low, right? Yeah, Nate's body language right now isn't great. He's throwing four or five pitches this inning that he thought were strikes, right? But again, like I said, it's a hitter's strike zone. You, he, he can't just be off the edge a ball or two. A lot of college umpires like to call a ball or two off the plate. And uh, Tony, is it has to touch that black corner of the plate on the white there, and that's as far as you're really going to get. So Mendham reached first on an E3, ends up at third on an E9. The 2-0. And there's a good. strike. All the way back now. Here we go. You got good enough stuff here to get your way out of this jam. Outside edge strike one, two balls and a strike. With two out, two on, two runners in scoring position for Caden Trankel, the center fielder. Trankel leading 176 with runners in scoring position. A swing and a miss to even the count at two and two. So back-to-back -back strikes for Daly, and the Kooks can get out of this shaky second inning with one pitch. Two balls, two strikes, and two out and two on for Oklahoma State to the top of the second inning. Rare back right here. I want to see 95. Have some fun here, Nate. Trankel hitless in the series. Awaits the 2-2 from Daly. And Daly will step off. Mendham is 90 feet away. Brown sitting at second. Second and third with two gone here in the top of the second. From the stretch, Daly comes plateward, and that's mm. away for ball three. He wanted that one. Full count with two out and two on. BYU broke on top with a yeah, he, solo home run to left from Latham in the bottom of the first, top of the second. Cougs trying to get out of a jam. Come on, Nate. First base empty, the full count, and two gone. Daly facing Trinkle. From the stretch, comes Plateward, and that's lined off the glove of the shortstop, Brock Watkins. One will score, two will score. The Cowboys take a 2-1 lead. On the single to left for Caden Trenkel. Brock Watkins leapt, got a bit of leather to the, to the ball, but the ball skips over and off his glove. And it's a two run single to left for Caden Trenkel. Two huge unearned runs there on a, on a PFP. If we just play catch, Greg, we talked about it last night. They scored three runs because they just didn't play catch. And now today they scored two more here in the top of the second because we didn't play catch. And it was the easiest catch that you play. It's a little flip. At bat, Atkinson, the number nine hitter. So the Cowboys have now scored five runs between Friday and Saturday, and not a single one has yeah. been earned. Hey, you know what, though? Hey, Brown did a good job of, you know, getting his hit, right? But then Gamble had his error, which then advanced them to where had Gamble not had that error, that would have just been a one-run RBI there and not two. So this is little things. And, you know, we had a meeting as a team off the bus tape before batting practice about simplifying this game and just you got to execute the little things and so far early in this game we've already had two huge mistakes that have cost us the lead early on but we got a lot of baseball left Greg. Adkison has seen two pitches come in one and one with two out and one on the Cowboys take a two run a two one lead on a two run single from Caden Trenkel so Trenkel's first hit of the series is a big one as it puts the Cowboys on top. Two balls and a strike now to Adkison, the number nine hitter, the catcher for the Cowboys. And Greg, that was just off the tip of Brock's glove. He jumped yep. as high as he could and almost, almost snagged that. Got a piece of it and just a piece. Daly working third base side of the rubber from the stretch, winds up and gets a swing and a miss from Adkison for strike two. Two balls and two strikes with two out, one on top of the second. BYU with two errors in the inning, contributing to the Cowboys' two runs. And last night it was two errors in the eighth inning that contributed to three runs, all unearned. BYU had a three-error three night last night and a two-error day so far today. The 2-2. Two -two. 
Daly winds up and delivers, and that's lined to Andrew Pintar. He backhands it on the fly, and that'll do it for the Cowboys in the top of the second. But the Cowboys score two. Two runs on two hits, and there were two errors, and there was one left on. Bottom of the second, Cowboys two, Cougars one on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Making his first start as a BYU Cougar, the DH Alex Sardina facing Mitchell Stone to begin the bottom of the second for BYU. Takes ball one, does Sardina. Swings and misses at strike one. One and one with no one out. First batter of the second inning is the UNLV transfer, Alex Sardina. Yeah, first start for the, in his career for us. Excited to see him in action. That'll and he laces a single to left with the third pitch he sees. The 1-1 count. And the DH gets his first start and first hit as a BYU Cougar. He was 0 for 2 with an RBI before that. And now he's 1 for 1 today. And the Cougars have the lead runner on. And that's already more hits in this game than BYU had in the entirety of last night's game. BYU one run on three hits. The Cowboys two runs on two hits. Two BYU errors giving the Cowboys both of their unearned runs in the second inning. They take a 2-1 lead to the bottom of the second. Cougs now playing catch up. Sardina at first and Austin Deming digs in to face Stone. Deming, the third baseman. So Sardina at first. Making his first start and playing his third game for BYU. Takes his lead as Stone kicks and fires. Oh, and that's Ooh, grounded no. off the third baseman. Did it hit him in the face? Yes, it did. First and second. He has a backhand. And that it, will likely be judged an infield hit. It, and that it, took a hard hop up to the third baseman. And it hit his wrist. McLean. And hit a uh, uh, wrist or palm of the glove went straight up. It hit him right in the mm. face. And he instantly could barely go get that ball. Yeah, he tracked down the ball in foul territory, but that was a sharp shot to the hot corner. And it was going to be a hard one to handle either way, even had he made the play, yeah. but he wasn't able to make it cleanly. And then it ricocheted off his face. And it'll be first and second with no one out. And that should be an, that should be an Austin Deming Yeah, they gave it a hit. hit. Yep. The score, so, we don't trust the scoreboard. We trust the yeah. stat broadcast. And so the hit for Deming, back-to-back -back singles to start the second inning for BYU. Cougs already with their fourth hit of the game. And still on a knee in foul territory is the third baseman, Nolan McClain. His cap is off. Trainer's out to attend to him. I wonder. It doesn't look like he has any blood coming out or anything. No, they're not, they're not dabbing at anything. They're just letting him take time to kind of regain his bearings here. And doesn't appear to be cut. He now stands up and gets ready to stay in this game, I think. I'm trying to tell where he took that as I'm looking for any uh, redness or abrasions on the face there. But certainly the best-case scenario for the moment for Oklahoma State is that uh, McLean stays in the game. That's indeed if he does. Uh, they could still make a change here. Coach Josh Holliday's out to converse with the third base umpire, Rob Hansen. They're going to get him some water. So this all happens with uh, no one out in the bottom of the second inning. Sardina singled to left, and then a rocket to third base from Deming that bounced off the wrist and then face, it would appear, of Noel McLean. And so back-to-back -back hits, back-to-back -back singles, and Cougars have something going first and second, no all of the second. The main number of note right now, is uh, is the E column through two games in a bit. Oklahoma State, one of the best fielding teams in the country, we should note. They have one error. BYU has six errors so far in this series. And the applause is for Nolan McLean, who will stay in the game at third base. Tough Good for him. Right there. So McLean will reset. As Brock Watkins steps into the batter's box, the number nine hitter, Brock hitting for the first time today. And he's hitless in this series. 0 for 6. One for his last nine. He now has a runner in scoring position. Brock hitting 250 with runners in scoring position. That runner is Sardina at second. Deming at first and laying down the bunt is Watkins. Advances both runners. They Nicely throw him out done. at first. Great execution right there. So the, the sack things. bunt for Brock. Nicely done. 
Hey, and he ran correctly to first, not on the inside there, which didn't get the runner's interference like we saw last night. And now you have Mitch, your big time senior leader here with the chance to uh, tie this game up or take the lead with the hit. So sacrifice bunt for Watkins, advances runners to third and second. Sardina at third, Deming now at second. And the number one hitter, Mitch McIntyre, flied out to left in the first, hits now in the second with his team down two to one. And two runners in scoring position for BYU starting center fielder. Ball one delivered from Mitchell Stone. So one gone here, bottom two. BYU, which broke out on top with a one nothing lead in the first on a Latham home run. Saw the Cowboys counter with two in the top of the second, two unearned runs in an inning featuring two BYU defensive errors. Now it's 2-1 Cowboys. The Kooks have two men on and one out for McIntyre. Good take. Take outside for ball two from Mitchell Stone. Stone is about to throw his 30th pitch into his second inning of work. Top of the order for BYU. Mitch McIntyre hitting with one out. Corners playing in. Great, Sharp shot. Great team hitting right there. To second, the throw to first will score a run to tie hit. the game. So an RBI for Mitch McIntyre. Hits to the right side, allowing the left side runner to advance to home. And that's Alex Sardina scoring the second run of the game on yeah. the ground out. It is just a perfectly so far executed offensive inning. And it's great to see after the struggle defensive inning we had in the top half to come out, get two singles. They were hit hard. We bunt them over, and then you hit a ground ball to second, you drive them in. Now, you ha now Hayden has a chance for a two-out hit to take the lead back. Hayden had a one-out hit in the first. It was a solo home run to left. Austin Deming now at third base. Hayden Latham takes strike one. Two runs, two hits for OSU. Two runs, four hits for BYU. We are tied up bottom two. We've already seen more, seen more runs scored in the first two innings today than... The entire game last night, that was a 3-0 Oklahoma State win. 2-2, bottom two. Latham, squared oh, pulled I back. Love that. He, the, both corners were playing back. He was trying to drag town third. Deming would have scored easy, and he would have just walked to first with how deep they were playing. Nice idea. Pitch well high and away for one ball, one strike, and two out here in the bottom of the second. The 1-1 forthcoming from Stone. And that skips to the That's catcher, really, Atkinson, ball really two. Good block. I thought that was going to go four hole under his legs there. And that would have been a run, run number three yes. for BYU. So Atkinson back to his crouch. Stone resets from the stretch with Deming at third base. Two out, one on for BYU. The 2-1 count to Latham. Didn't catch the outside edge. It's ball three. Three yeah. balls and a strike to Hayden. Tried to go change up. It just stayed a little high. Great chance to hit right here. Have some fun, 3-1. Three, three balls and a strike. Two out, one on. The one on is Deming at third. He had the second of back-to-back -back singles here in the second. And that's drilled to center, but taken two steps back as the center fielder Tranker, Trinkle makes the catch. And the Cowboys are out of the bottom of the second. BYU scores one run. One run on two hits. There were no errors. There was a runner left on. We go top three in a tie ball game. Cowboys and Cougars square at two on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Utahns love staying active. And Intermountain Healthcare is here to help keep it that way. Because maybe you can't lift 500-pound plates like a lineman. But you might have what it takes to scale Olympus. Maybe you got three foot range instead of three point but you can handle three feet of powder. It's a way of life. And if there's ever a setback, we're here to get the Cougs and you back out there. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU athletics. Learn more at intermountainsportsmed.org. Okay, that's good. Whoa, whoa, Dave! Sorry, I'll go grab some paper towels. You can't let Dave pour things. He works at JCW's. They fill stuff up past the brim over there, like their milkshakes. They're thick, rich, and oh my gosh. Delicious. Oh no. Dave's filling up Crystal's car for her. Dave, stop. Hey, this is Clark for JCW. Stop into any of our five locations today. We're located in American Fork, Thanksgiving Point, Provo, South Jordan, and our new location in Harriman. Come in and see why at JCW's we believe in quality and a lot of it. How can we be more accepting of others? Join us on Finding Center and in good faith as we search for answers to this question.
Today, Professor Keith Vorkink centers his message on a biblical passage that exhorts all of us to judge not. After, Dr. Richard Mao of the Fuller Theological Seminary in California discusses his experiences as a leader of interfaith dialogue. Finding Center and in Good Faith, today on BYU Radio. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Top of the third inning here at Globe Life Field in Arlington, Texas. Greg Rubel and Tuckett Slade with you as Rock Riggio will lead off the top of the third. He's the leadoff hitter. Backhand stab with the grounder to first from Sapiti. The scoop to Daly, and the Cougars have an out here in the top uh, of the third inning. And that was an excellent play uh, from Ryan Sapiti, diving to his right to backhand the sharp shot to first base, and the scoop to Daly. And that's uh, cleanly done as the Cougars yeah. have one out here in the top of the third. I mean, that ball is ripped, Greg. Just scorched. Absolutely gri- ripped. And he dives, makes the play, and then makes an easy flip to Daly, which, hey, you know what? You learn from your mistake, and you make a harder play look easy. One out with Zach Earhart now hitting. The right-handed hitting Earhart after the lefty hitter Riggio is retired. The 3-1 ground out. Strike one on the first pitch and ball one on the second. One and one, one out, no one on for Oklahoma State in the top of the third inning. So the 3-1 ground out to begin inning number three. Oklahoma State. It was a throwing error on a would-be 3-1 situation in the second that allowed a batter to reach and started the inning for Oklahoma State. That resulted in two unearned runs. Scores now 2-2. A take on a pullback for strike two. Two balls and two strikes to Zach Earhart with Nate Daly working into his third inning. Earhart hit into a 4-6-3 DP in the first. Nicely done. And a swinging strikeout as he's now 0 for 2 today. A K for Nate Daly. He that is the back. first strikeout of the day for Nate. Just threw the fastball right by him. Nicely done. Jake Thompson, the left fielder, the left-handed hitting left fielder, will step in. He was retired on a 3-1 ground out in the first inning. BYU 2, Oklahoma State 2. BYU with 1 in the first and 1 in the second. The Cowboys got their two unearned runs in the top of the second. We're top three now. And Nate Daly with two out, and the base is clear. Faces Thompson. Sends that inside for ball one. Jake Thompson's reached in five in a row. A mighty whiff there. Yes, it was. One ball, one strike. Thompson swinging from his heels there. The kick and fire from Daly. That's fouled out of play down the left field line. One ball, two strikes. Yeah, Nate's starting to get loose here. He's really, yeah. the fastball is starting to really jump out of the hand. Hey, we've seen it in the fall all the way up to 96 miles an hour. Um, he's normally 91, 93 early in this season, but uh, when he wants to rear back and get it, he has it there. This will be his 47th pitch delivered. And that's well outside for ball two. The count evens up with two out. And no one on here in the top of the third inning. Well, that's the tough part about that, that big air. This, he had to throw about 20 more pitches that inning than he didn't need to because of it. You're listening to Cougar Baseball. Alongside Tuckett Slade, here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. All right, so back here at Globe Life Field in Arlington, Texas. Pitching change for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Entering the game in the bottom of the third, the reliever Roman Fanselker. We saw Fanselker Thursday night in the series opener. He pitched two complete innings, didn't allow a hit, struck out three, didn't issue any walks. And on the year, Fensalker, 10 Ks to three bases on balls. He's allowed 12 hits in 14 innings pitched. And a 20 pitch outing against BYU in those two innings. So pretty economical. Hooks lead off the bottom of the third with Andrew Pintar digging in. 
McKinney struck out swinging in the first. He has five strikeouts in the series. And he's looking to get going here. 234 is average on the season. First pitch today from Fanselker. And he can run it up there mid to high 90s. And that's lined right back past Fanselker to the shortstop who fires to first base. And that's one gone. Marcus Brown to David Mendham. Six to three. And the Kooks have one down here in the top, in the bottom of the third inning. Cole Gamble, singled and was stranded in the first. BYU and OSU tied at two here, bottom three. Gamble lifts the bat off his left shoulder. Awaits the Fansalker delivery, and that's outside edge strike one. So Cole will step out and kind of ruefully consider that first call. It puts him down 0-1 with one gone and no one on here in the bottom of the third inning. Roman Fansalker, second pitcher of the day for OSU. Outside for ball one, one ball, one strike. Fansalker began his career at Arizona back in 2018, redshirted there. He's a Tommy, Sa- uh, Tommy John surgery pitcher as well. Making his seventh appearance and again did pitch against BYU on Thursday. The 1-1 to Cole becomes a 2-1 count. So one out and no one on for BYU here in the bottom of the third inning. Cougs and Cowboys playing their third game and final game of this series. Their 19th game overall, 19th meeting. Cowboys have won 13 of the previous 18, including last night's 3-0 affair here at Globe Life Field. The 2-1 from Fanselker. A kick and fire. A cut from Cole that's fouled and dribbled back to the screen. Count even at 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, great swing right there. Hey, now you get your two-strike approach here. Cole 2-9 for nine in the series with a couple of RBI. Had a two-run home run to give BYU a 2-0 lead in the first inning of the first game Thursday night. Hooks have four dingers in the series now, including a Hayden Latham solo shot today. The 2-2 from Fanselker. Cole drives it to the gap in left center. Back to the track. The center fielder makes Are the you catch at the wall. Wow. Wow. Cole Gamble is robbed. On a wow. drive to left center, Caden Trankel makes the catch with his glove over the yellow line. Wow, I can't explain to you how good of a play that was right there. I don't think it would have gone out. I think it would have been a double off the wall, but it was an extremely, extremely amazing play there by Trinkle. So the momentum of the catch may have carried his yeah. glove to the yes, wall, correct. but it was very close to a home run. And either way, could have been extra bases easily for Cole Gamble. Caden Trankel ranging to his right, makes a run to the track and makes a leaping catch at the wall. And it's two out for BYU in the bottom of the third. And the deepest part of that gap in left center yeah. where the wall does jut out 372 to left center. But that's a deeper part of the gap. More about a four, that's about 400 and change. That was given a ride by Cole, but kept in the park by Caden Trenkel. The 1-0 count becomes 1-1 one and one to Colin Ruder, who steps in against Roman Fanselker. Hmm. What a catch in center field from Caden Trankel. The 1-1 to Reuter. BYU's catcher in the five hole tonight, today. And that's chopped down foul right in the box. So one ball, two strikes to Reuter. Two gone and no one on for BYU in the bottom of the third. It looked to me live, Tuckett, that the glove might have gotten to that yellow line and maybe even just flipped it yeah. with momentum, perhaps. Yeah, the way I saw it was that he caught the ball that uh, before yeah. it got to the wall and right. his momentum carried his glove over the wall. Yeah. But it could have possibly, but all I know is it's still no, an amazing play. I'm sure that, yeah, it might have been kept in, but he made it that close to the wall as that's a called strike. And Reuter is out. So are the Cougars in the bottom of the third. So for BYU, bottom three, no runs, no hits, there were no errors. There was no one left on. We go top of the fourth. 
with the score 2-2 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.